Okay. Are you guys with me? Are you guys here with me? Okay, Tamika. See, now I put you in a group and I also sent. Hey, Joy, did you guys get the things I just sent? And did you get in the group? Okay. Hey, Katina. Okay. Okay. Joy, I just sent the manual again. Um, what's going to happen is you may have to get it afterwards so we could roll with the class. I am going to, I'm attempting to put it on my screen now so you guys can see it. And we'll do it that way. Katina, you're not in the group. We're going to have to, um, we're going to have to find out another way for you guys to get the manual. Maybe because it's so big. I don't know. Because it is, uh, it is three pages, uh, 30 pages. And T Lay, Talay, what is your, what's your Facebook name? These things I'm going to have to wait till after the class because I can't really do this technical stuff. That's why I just spent the past two days trying to get this done. Added, but the link didn't work. Okay. Today, I'll, I'll definitely get you straight as far as being in the group. Could you make this? The, the video on. So I'm going to open up the uh, I'm going to share my screen with you guys. That way you guys can at least see the manual here. Let me download it. It's pretty big. Um, let's get it started that way. Okay. Now go back. Work with me, guys. Bear with me, guys. This is my first time using this platform. I actually like it. Once I get it. Once I get it. Squared away. But I want you guys to see. Okay, there we go. Application. Okay, I'm getting it, guys. Did I do it right? Did you guys see that? I just want to know if I'm doing it right. Okay, great. Okay. I'm getting there. We're going, we going to get it. So, now, huh? Uh, 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 uh. Okay. Do you see? What do you see? No, where, where's the manual? No, on the screen. Black screen, right. Well, we, the technical stuff getting on my nerves. I'm ready to rock and roll. Screen is black. Do you see me at all, Tamika? Okay. <laughs> okay. This is crazy. We're going to get it, guys. 
but where is my it was up there that's why I say this technical stuff get on my nerves okay let me go launch uh, launch my file complete manual okay do you see a manual Yolanda nah. okay share screen Okay. You tell me. Just tell me if you see us. You see. You don't see my manual. You see a manual. Okay. Okay. Got it. So this is the manual. Um. And right now we should be on like page fifteen, but we <laughs> we on page one. Um. The introduction, we're going to run through it. Um, I'm just proud of you guys for taking my workshop. This is a very big step, and I know I want you to know that you are not alone. This guide will give you all the basic installation steps to assemble your pipe and drapes, and the possibilities are endless. You guys are going to be making some amazing things, and I want to be able to see your process from start to finish. You'll be able to install backdrops, curtain walls, tunnels, canopies, and so much more. So we're about to get started. One of these, when you get your actual manual, this is like the first page. And you guys will hear me saying all the time, um, discovering your why. And it's really, really, really important to discover your why and always knowing why it is you do what you do or you want to do the decor or anything in events or whatever it is you want to do recognize what your why is because it's going to be those times that you want to give up like i almost felt this morning but you got to realize why you do it and that's the stuff that's pretty much going to keep you in it to win it um you know you guys know the prompts i do every monday motivational monday and you guys come up with some amazing stories and you know we go through a lot as far as wanting to give up but we're going to recognize our why to keep us going. So when you get your books, I want you to actually write that down, right? Give me six reasons why you want to do decor or why you want to do draping or whatever it is that you're on this mission to do. Give me six reasons why you want to do it. And I also want you to give me four family members or friends that you trust. Um... I mean, absolutely trust. Some pe some people have a big network. Some people have a great support system. And then some people do not. And in this industry and doing what you're about to embark upon, it's really important to have a team. Um, we cannot do it alone. We cannot be everywhere doing everything. So it's really important to, to have a team. And whether it's family, friends, your neighbors, whomever. But those times when you do feel alone, you'll always be able to go back to this and see that there is someone that you trust and can count on. Because sometimes I know it feel like there is none. Uh, so you'll need that. <laughs> you'll need that page frequently. Okay. Module one. That's the intro to pipe and drape. We're going to cover the basic components, including base plates, crossbars, uprights, and drape. We're going to learn about different fabric textures and its uses and various accessories and hardware. And we're going to learn an outline of different ways that you can add draping to your events. That's module one, and that's what we're about to do right now. You guys with me still? Cool. Okay, so we're going to run through the the the, the uh, pieces. Oh yeah, check out my shirt, y'all. Ah, you like that, don't you? Okay. Many of you guys are familiar, some of you guys are not familiar with the various base plates um, of a commercial backdrop. This is 
This is one base plate, and this is a 15 pounder. They come in various shapes, various sizes, uh, different weights, different patterns, and I know they all look alike, but they many of them come, um, they, they go to different size kits. So the most standard one is a two inch um, diameter pole, but some of them are 1.5. So when you're doing your shopping, if you haven't already gotten your kits, please be careful because right it may now, look the same, but it's everything. really different and it will not, um, it will not go together. It won't go together. But some of these units, um, most of them come in kits. Some of them you can buy separate. You can just buy an upright. You can just buy a crossbar. You can just buy a base plate. Um, so you can break it up that way. Just when you buy them, make sure you are getting the right kit piece for the, the units that you already have. Um, that's this. Let me see. Let me adjust this. Okay. You also have to be mindful of these units, which are the pens. They come in different lengths, different sizes, and you have to get the right size pen to go with the base. Okay, I was just looking at what was in the book. Yeah, so the long, the taller your unit, the taller your your backdrop height, the longer your pin will be. These go range from a three inch all the way up to a ten inch. Um, ten inches are most most common for units that are like twenty feet high or anything over fifteen feet high. Um, I also wanted to show you guys the unit that a lot of you are getting that I absolutely do not want you guys to get. And I'm going to show you why. So we can nip this in the book. A lot of you guys have these units. Or may have had these units. And I want to show you why this is not a good unit to you. For this, for draping of this magnitude. But I did start with this unit. Um, it did get me by. It got me through some situations. But if you, if you, you try to look heard me say I was nervous the whole time because I just thought it would fall. So when I left the event, when I would leave the events, I would be scared and uh, hoping that it didn't fall on anyone. How many of you had this unit? Okay. I'm just gonna leave it short. This is typically it would be a little wider, but um I had that one but I just purchased the heavy ones. I have it but the photography. Yes, I have that always worried about falling. Absolutely. Yeah. They will absolutely fall. Difficult to cover legs. So the legs are not too bad if you have Sam, she said. enough Sam. Uh, if you have enough panels, but you can't put many panels on here because it's not sturdy. So I'm mainly only doing this for those that still make it purchases and think that you can possibly get away with this. I'm about to put those thoughts to rest. I don't even want you to be curious and thinking you won't make it work. Okay, it's pretty basic. Sex and then the other two right. Thank <laughs> you. 
pretty basic. This is only one panel. I'm just going to do a, a over. But do you, I mean, do you just you kind of like, do you see, do you see what's going on over here? Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't think you want to go through this. Now, this is a little more premium fabric, it's a little heavier. Just the, 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 and that's only one. Can you guys see that? That's dent. It's in the middle. In the middle where it's sagging. And that's just with the one. So when you start to drape, I mean, it's just really, it's just not working. I really just did that to show you guys that the, it's, it's not working. Just this one, $39 maybe. A commercial unit you could get as cheap as $99. It's definitely worth the investment. Absolutely. This is a great starter unit for maybe if you're only doing a treat table and you kind of want to just get away. Just get away. You can, but you're not going to do the kind of draping you guys want to do with that. Okay, so... These are your upright. This is a two piece. They come two piece, three piece. They come fixed, fixed meaning uh, they don't go up and there, down. They are not adjustable. Um, but they can be extended with an extender, which is another piece. But these units go really, really high. I mean, I'm almost touching the ceiling right there. And then they got the Easy locking mechanism. It's really, really easy to use. One thing you have to be careful of when you're adjusting up and down, mainly down, because you can pinch your fingers real easily. I want to make sure you guys can see this. Real easily in between in, in between there and in between right here. It'll, it'll happen really, really quick, and it's really, really painful, so be careful. Yes. Oh yeah, the trip has it. Yes, they are. So these, this is the upright. Um, you need at least two of these to complete your backdrop. This is your crossbar. Crossbar, drape support bra, drape support bar, same thing. This is adjustable. It has the um, easy button, the button lock right there. So that's where you would snap it into place. It has two different sizes. And that's how you measure your backdrop. The length you want it to be. Push it back in. Pull it back. These you would need at least one uh, to complete your backdrop. If you are using a double cross ball, you would use two. You still could get the same design as a double cross bar using the up and over method. And of course, we clearly gonna go through that um, a little later in another module. But they pretty much are your pieces for your backdrop. You have your bases. Cutting my head off. Okay, you have your bases, which you need at least two. Um, the different heights is determined for the how much fabric you're going to use or the um, density of your, your, your backdrop. You have your uprights, you have two. You could get a fixed unit. Fixed units normally is eight feet tall or 10 feet tall, but it can be extended with an, another piece, which is an extender. So some of you guys, I told you, if you just want to get a commercial unit just to get in, it would be great to get a fixed unit, especially if you're just doing treat tables or specialty tables and you're not going to do parameter draping or um, like sweetheart tables tend to be taller because it's normally at weddings. So 
you would use a, 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 a taller one for that. But they are your pieces for your backdrop, your hardware. Then you complete it with your fabric. This is, y'all, you guys hear me saying all the time, I love sheer ball. That's what this is, it's crushed. Uh, I, I no longer use the flat. Um, one, it wrinkles easily and it's just too much maintenance. And this just looks better. It looks better, it gathers better. It's, e it's just easy. So it is a little more expensive, maybe about, it's probably about $2 more. Um, but it's worth it. It's definitely worth it. Yeah, I don't, um, that's why I, I came over to Facebook as well, because I didn't want no one to, I didn't want anyone to miss out. I don't know why you couldn't get in class. Everyone else is there. Um, you want to know what? What group am I in? All them people. Wait a minute, guys. I'm over here in Facebook land, and I think I'm in the wrong group. As always. I swear, I always do that. Okay, let's go. I'll give all y'all little secrets away for free. <laughs> Oh God! Big saving. Designer shoes, men's and women's coats. Leave no sale unturned. They gonna kill me. Great home items. Okay, so I'm in the right group now. Twenty percent off. I think I was in the drinking designer. My bad. Ready? Let's. All right, we roll it. Um. So yeah, this this is what was complete your backdrop. Is your fabric. Um. So before you begin with your backdrops. The manual for the manual. Before you begin with your backdrops, uh, you would decide your how much uh, you're covering. What would you are you using a one panel? Are you using a two panel or triple panel? Um, and when you figure that out, that's when you adjust your your crossbar. That's when you would adjust your crossbar. But you, I'm trying to figure out how can I. I want to take you guys with me so I don't stay right here. So I don't stay right here. So you guys can see close up. Okay, well, that's why I'm gonna need you to come in. Okay. And that's why I need you guys to see your manual. Anyone else is looking at their manuals? Cause I'm going through the manuals. Anyone else looking through your manual? I'm gonna do the screen share to tell you guys some other stuff really quick in the manual. Okay, we're gonna pick up where we left off. Okay, um, we just went through the intro to pipe and drape. We're gonna talk about some different fabric textures, uh, accessories, really, really important. There's a lot of things you could do and customize your backdrops with the accessories. And then we're going to talk about some ways to add drape into your events. This was what I just told you guys. The pipe and drape systems are comprised of four basic components. The systems all appear to look the same, but they have a lot of different parts. And if they're not paired with the right system, it will not work. It will, it, it will not work. And you cannot make it work because you'll like, um, what is called with the screw? When you ruin the thread. Okay, so it's just it just won't work, guys. <laughs> so you want to research the different types carefully before you make your purchases. Um, these units are not cheap, so you don't want to go through all that getting the wrong unit. Even though a lot of the companies do do returns, however, they will not refund you shipping and since the units are heavy shipping charges are not cheap so told you guys the four basic components two base plates you need at least two crossbars come in various different sizes and lengths you need two uprights and your drapes this is the configuration where your base plates go where your uprights go and where your crossbar go. Oh, 
Okay, so various fabric textures and uses. <laughs> Number one is the wool. That's what I just picked up and showed you guys. It can be used for any kind of design. It always leaves a romantic feel, especially when you pair it with uplighting. It is transparent and come in a flat or crushed texture. This drape is commonly used at weddings and is typically 118 inches wide. And that's great for bunching. When you bunching and brooching your fabric, when it's really, really wide like that, you tend to not need as many. It is generally used for high budget decor for any design wanting that wow factor. So if you want that over the top elegance, you kind of always, always want to go with the ball. Number two would be cotton. Cotton is the most ordinary and is the cheapest. It is hardly used by seasoned professionals. However, it can be used for low budget decor. It also can be used for many kids' parties as far as the backdrops. You can see or use, you'll see cotton a lot with the kids' parties when it's like the red and the green and the really colorful, colorful themes um, because it's just so much going on with the party itself or the theme itself. No one really can notice the type of texture that the, that the backdrop is. So you can get away with that. If you have a Mickey theme or, or something like that, you can get away real easily with a cheap cotton blend and no one would be able to tell. It actually looks really nice. So that's your uh, cotton blend. Number three is your banjo, which is often used at convention centers for trade shows, job fairs, and other similar events. They typically run 48 inches wide and most facilities require them to be flame retardant. If you have fabric that isn't flame retardant, you can have it treated to, it's, it's really, it gets kind of expensive and it's like a really rough process, but it can be done, um, that can be done. Then you have your satin. Satin is a very flexible panel, feeling silky smooth. Although it can be used for anything, it's commonly used for formal events. Um, it grabs between, it grabs beautifully when pleating and swagging. It's opaque, meaning it blocks out 80% of the light. It's not um, sheer or translucent, such as the, the wall. Um, so, you know, if you want something where you want to darken a room, is, is a good idea to go with satin. And then you have your organza. It's very transparent and it's very shiny. It's a light fabric. It's not as flexible as satin and it's a little more expensive. It's best used for, back, for backdrops, ceiling drapes. It's really, really good for ceiling drapes and skirting. And I, I don't know if you guys, you know, do the Pinterest boards or, or like that, but the organza right now is, I can tell, going to be trending because they, they're really using it a lot on the um, the specialty tables and it looks really, really good. <laughs> but at times it can be very difficult and is not recommended for any swagging designs. It doesn't, it doesn't gather that way. Really good. Um, so some of the accessories, we're going to run through is the pole covers. Now, pole covers is um is a really great is a really great item to have. Um you guys know I hate when you can see your poles, although you you know you can cover them manually how we normally do. But now that they have the ones you can slide on and rouge looks really really pretty. Um that's a great accessory to have. Also, your crossbar hangers uh, come in two sizes. Um, the longer units are technically for when you hang in chandeliers. It gives you that width where you have the distance between your two fabrics when you layer in fabrics. Um, also, your S hooks and C hooks. We talked about this um, in uh, we talked about this some um, in the group when you guys see I hang up frames or. Uh, embellishments these units makes it really really easy and um sometimes i still use fishing fishing wire though if i don't want it to be if i want it to be concealed but these hooks works really really well and i see i got c hooks again but this is this unit is actually the actually the um the crossbar hanger for when you're doing a canopy 
and you want to hang something from the middle, such as a chandelier. Okay, let me check on you guys because I can't see y'all. Are you guys still with me? Okay, great. Great, great, great. Okay. We can get to the draping part real soon. Y'all know I got to run through this technical stuff, though. So you guys, as I'm doing it, you'll know what I'm talking about. If I say a term that you're not familiar with, that's what I'm telling you guys now. So you'll know. Um, all right, let me pull my screen back up here. I'm going to pull a manual up back up really quickly and now our, our sun is like shifting around so you let me know if if you guys can't see something okay ways to incorporate pipe and drape Okay. Every event space, no matter how unsightly, can be converted into a beautiful venue right before your eyes. It's not required to be a certified event designer. Your hands, actually yours, yes, yours, can create some of the most amazing transitions to event space. Ugly, oversized spaces can become the perfect site for your event. School gymnasiums can become intimate and elegant spaces for formal galas. A rundown rental hall to actually become a magical space filled with ambiance. The possibilities are endless. You'll be amazed at how drapery can help you achieve the style and the atmosphere that you desire. You can create a beautiful backdrop behind specialty tables such as dessert stations, gift tables, sweetheart tables, head tables, and candy buffets. Cover ugly walls while hiding <laughs> Dated wallpaper, I hate that. Holes, you can hide bad paint and obstructions such as windows, fire extinguishers, and light fixtures. Just keep in mind though, when you're actually trying to hide something, make sure that your fabric is dense enough. Like you will not be able to black out light with two shear panels. So make sure you have uh, maybe some satin or even taffeta, just make sure you have enough fabric or something that's, that will give you the desired effect you're looking for. You also can transform larger venues to appear smaller by draping off the unused areas that makes it look more cozy. You can create a hallway to guide guests directly where you want them to go. And you can darken a room to create a more intimate mood. You can actually create a room within a room. When you have a space and you want to create maybe a VIP area or something sectioned off, you can do that with draping. Really, really easy. So. Okay. That is it for module one. What's the, what's the time check? Uh, 10, 10. Okay, see, I caught up. So I ran through... Oh, what did it say? It said, do you guys see me? It's saying that. Oh, you did? Okay. It was saying it was a problem. Okay. So. We went through the module one, the book portion. Now we're about to get down to some assembling the uh, pipe and drapes. Okay. I can't really, I can't see this. Sun. Can you guys see the screen? Wait a minute. I just want to make sure I have the correct. No. Um, no, Leah. That was actually the guide that just, it was like, um, no, that was only eight pages. The manual is what I'm showing you now on the screen. That is 30 pages. Um, and I only sent that out today. Yeah, it's about 30 pages. But you'll get it. I definitely will make sure everyone have it. Like everything we go through will be in the file section in the Facebook group, not the normal Facebook group, the VIP group. And you should be in that group because I've manually put everyone in today. Uh, if not, I'll definitely make sure you're straight. 
Um, so I'll make sure everyone everyone has it. Okay, we're going to go through. Y'all ready to assemble a pipe and drape? <laughs> okay. This is the pins I was telling you guys about earlier. Uh, you have to attach these to the bases. And you just have to make sure that you have the right pin going to the correct base. Or you're going to have a boo boo. I need a flat heat. So, this is the actual pin. It's really heavy, too. And this is the nut. So I'm gonna attach it to the base plate and I'm gonna actually take you guys over there with me. Oh, my bad. So okay. So this, as I was saying before, is go off a little bit. It's your base plate. You, they, as you see, it has several different holes, and it gives you different um, places that you can put that you can put your pen. Most commonly, you will always put it in the middle. For one, it gives you it just gives you a lot more balance. It's a lot more sturdy. If you want your backdrop to go flush against the wall you would use that unit. If you want it to go, let me turn it for you. In the corner, you would use that unit. You guys with me? Okay. So, I always go with the, the middle unit. Take my nut. Screw in the back. And I just screw in. And when you get, when you push it in, Sometimes you could just give it a little wiggle to ensure that it's tight. Or a, do not tighten it too much with a screwdriver, but just a little bit, just to ensure that it's tight like that. It shouldn't move, shouldn't have any play in it. Okay. to take my crossbar. You put it back up on the table. Oh. I'm going to take my crossbar. I'm going to measure it according to how long I want my unit. And I'm not going to go too long because I want to make sure you guys, you know, all the way in the, in the screen. Um, 
yeah, so that's what we wanted. I'm just going to have it placed to the second setting. And I, this is how I this is how I measure. Take my crossbar. I place it on the floor. Mm -hmm. And I place my bases directly where I where I want my crossbar. As such. Okay. Then I take my upright and it's low have it in its lowest position. Have it in its lowest position. And just, just like that. Upright, lowest position. Now I am ready to break. But first, I'm going to double check. My measurements. Insert the crossbar there. And do the other one there. Now I want to give you guys a close-up so you can see just exactly what I did. That is it. I picked the upright up, I meant the uh, crossbar up and stuck it in that slot. Just like that. What? Oh, wait, I missed something. What you guys say? Yeah, about the holes. Oh. The holes. Hey, so I told y'all it'd be the little, it'd be really the little tips and tricks. I'm telling y'all that really saved you a lot of time and it just makes things a lot more simple. So, same thing. Just stick it in. Stick it in there. And remember, guys, um, even though you don't have your manual, just have something, a piece of paper or something. If a question come up and I may, if I don't see it because the screen isn't in my hand, when I do open up Q and A, which will be maybe in about 20 minutes, uh, just for this section, just I'll let you guys um, ask whatever it is you wanna ask. And if it's something I can actually physically show you, I'll show you, it's not a problem. Okay. So y'all with me still? Okay. Now, oh, I don't know why I put the thing down. My fault. Now, before, also, before I start any of my, this is a basic design, so it's nothing right now for designs. But what I do is, in preparation, I put my fabric where I want it to go, on the floor, like that. So if you guys see, I always lay out my fabric. Just like that. Why do I lay my fabric out? To lay, is that, is that, was that a question? Like, why do I lay out my fabric? Or was that a miss, uh, hit the keyboard. <laughs> Tell me if they reply. So, I'm about to start threading the rod. I'll take one. Okay, no problem. I'll take one. You always make sure these tags, most nine times out of ten, your fabric will have a tag on the on, on the on one of the edges. Make sure this tag is on the back end of your backdrop. There's nothing worse than having a backdrop and then you have a tag smack there in front. It happens a lot by mistake. Um, so just, just double check. So make sure that your hem, your stitch line is actually in the back and your tag is in the back. You guys with me? I'm sorry, Cassandra, the password is posh, P-O-S-H. Okay. Wait a minute, but if 11, okay, that's cool. 
Yeah, so Cassandra, if you want to come on over, um, it's posh. Okay, so I'm going to start threatening. Threat. This is how I do. Um, if I have like a lot of design or, you know, if I'm doing more than one backdrop or if I'm doing maybe three backdrops, I would be in doing the one unit and then I would have my little assistant over here. <laughs> They'll be over in another section threatening threading. So I'll show you real briefly what I mean. You can have your, I don't know if you can see it. You can have your other units threaded over on the side. You can thread that thread them beforehand, so uh, it'll save you some time. So now that I'm showing you guys that I'm threading now, I'm not going to sit here. I think I plan on going through maybe three to four backdrops. I'm not going to sit here and thread all of them. So I did some prep work for a couple of the other backdrops, but I'm going to show you how to thread this one here. So this is what I did. I think this should probably come closer. I don't know. But I take the, the crossbar, I rest it on my shoulder, and then thread. Make sure your tag is in the back, and then you just bring it on. Tag in the back, thread. And that's why I leave them on the floor exactly where I want them to be. So I just can pick up, go, pick up, go, pick up, go. Just like such. You guys get, you picking up what I'm putting down? I like that same. I'll put that back in there. Uh, and these fabric, I mean, these panels actually, <laughs> I hardly ever use anything shorter than 10. I mean, shorter than 15 feet. <clears throat> these are 10s, which is a great, um, it, it is a great size as your base. Um, if you can see that. I love the way they tag their things. They put what it is and the feet, the foot on there. Cause sometimes I get confused, especially when I got like 30 panels and I don't mean always what, but I look at the tag and I'll see what it is. But 10 feet is good as a base, uh, as a base panel. You can, you can, but I wouldn't suggest you to attempt to layer or do the up and over method with a tent because it's too short. That is going to end up, you're going, it's going to swing at the end. You're not going to have that puddle. So uh, never do anything other than your base with a tent. You guys with me? Yeah, know I got to check on y'all. Okay. So I'm going to the other side and do the same thing I did on that side. I rest it on my shoulder. Yeah. How many have I put on thus far, guys? How many panels have I put on thus far? Okay. She's so much at the sink. Huh? You go, girl, whoever that was. That was. Oh, small. Miss David. Oh, that was Davida. Davida. Um, so that's my six. Uh, technically, I use anywhere. You guys know I'm a panel freak. I like uh, using a lot. But. For the sake, I'm, I'm trying to see if you can see through that. I may put two more up. Just give me two more tens. <clears throat> but technically, you really can use six to eight. Six is really good, and you would just use two more for your pole covers. 
uh, you would use one on each side. So you would end up having eight panels here. But I'm gonna I'm use, um, for the sake that we are in front of a window and I don't want it to be translucent, I'm gonna use uh, 10. You get to come on top. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then if you if you if you are lucky enough to have a partner, it cuts your design time in half. I meant like so easy. Having help is so important. Okay. Okay, give me a what you call it? Measuring tape. It's in the black thing. Okay. Now another thing I do. I don't use this because I can eyeball it. But for the sake of showing you guys, I'm gonna show you how to measure it. Know what size this crossbar is because it's a uh, six to ten. But it's always good to mark your middle. Your middle is so important. Your middle is important when you're dealing with your backdrops, your hardware, and it's important when you're dealing with your fabric. If you know exactly where your middle is, it's easy for you to just pick up pen, and you'll see me do that later. But you can just pick up, tack it without having to measure and pull and figure it all out. Just always know where your middle is. Know where the middle of your fabric is lengthwise. So if you have a 10, a 10 foot panel, automatically knowing where the the fifth, the five feet mark is, it, it will just really decrease your setup time drastically. So, but this is how I, when I first started, I, I did have to use this. I needed to know where the middle of my backdrop was. So that's four. That is where it is. And you can even go as or much as doing that. It's your backdrop. You can do what you want to do. This is where you put your fabric and you start spacing them out. One panel typically would go every other, every foot. So you would have one. Okay, so this will be my eight. Like I said, you can get away with just using six. But for the sake of that window, I don't want you guys to get a lot of light. I'm going to use eight. You can use the measuring tape, and you probably would in the beginning to help you get quicker with just knowing. You should just be able to look at it and kind of just know. All right, that's a foot. That's a foot. That's a foot. That's a foot. As long as you know where your middle is, which is here, you're good to go. And then you just will stand back, look at it, and then go from there. So next, who, what am I about to put up next? What am I about to do to this backdrop next? Pop. Posh pop-up quiz. <laughs> Some 
Someone tell me, what do you think I'm about to do next? To this basic backdrop. Take a guess, guys. Take a stab at it. Somebody said balance and drink. Balance. Miss Talia. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, technically, yes. But since this is just a basic backdrop, not doing any draping yet, this is your foundation. This is my pole cover. This is a pole cover. Uh, like I was telling you guys earlier, um, you know, technically we make these from a regular whole panel, whole one complete panel. Um, you, you, we put a, a pipe cleaner in there and this actually, I use it so much, the hole is too big. You shouldn't have that much play in there. Your, your, your upright should not be able to go through the hole. If it does, it's too big. So just tighten it up. Make sure it's concealed and attach it. Just like that. That's your pole cup. So now I'm gonna show you how I did it. You just take one panel, the entire panel, I swear, guys, for the life of me, <laughs> when I first got into this, I could not figure this part out. And you know, wasn't nobody trying to tell me. But I was like, how, how did they do that? It was so simple. You got a four inch seam down here. You could do it with the rod. You technically supposed to do it with a rod. I don't, I don't, because I just don't need to. <laughs> I'm trying to make my screen bigger. Okay, that's a little better. So, take my rod, I mean, not my rod, my finger. <laughs> go through the panel, go through the hole. And I think it's actually about to end my broadcast for this, for this module. So after I do the pole covers, I'm actually done this module. And you could do these with any kind of fabric, with any color, make it match your, uh, match your design. They look really, really cool. I really love the sequence ones, the glitzy ones. They are beautiful. I don't like the satin ones too much because satin just shows all of the wrinkles. But yeah, so I'm taking the pipe, the pipe cover, I meant pipe cleaner and going through just like that then i tie the ends just like that and ta-da it's just that simple only thing is when you do this make sure your tag is where and the inside Somewhere. Yep. You found the bead girl. Make sure your tag is at the inside. <laughs> then with your pipe, I mean, your pole cover. Then you just want to go across your design and level it out. I always start from the middle and work my way out. Make sure it's kind of even. Okay, what do I do next, guys? Uh? 
when you're working this close up to your to your backdrops, it's really, really easy to over, overlook something. So it's always best to step back from it and then look at it. Like I see that I see that hole. It's like a it needs some work right there. There's also another area right there. So then let's go back up and fix it. But being though that window is in back of me, that really doesn't help. If you ever have to set up in front of a window like such, it's always best to use a backing. Use some kind of opaque panel in back of your unit so you don't see through. Unless some, some units that you see through actually look nice. So it depends on your design. But from here, I left. So you guys to see the, you guys know I never let my fabric swing. So I um make sure it's straight up on top, and then I go to fix this down here. You pick your fabric up as such, and push the the access to the back, so you can get a nice cut. just kind of puddle it out a little bit to give it a finish even edge and then to give it a little a little posh look yeah the posh effect how about that 
but this is this is normally where you would start with anything. This is where you would start when you're when you're doing your layers. And even if you're doing a double cross ball, you will start with a basic backdrop, full flush, and then you do your additions. Do we have any questions as of now? Yeah, wait, let me see. Uncle on, I do. Yes. I don't know what's wrong, Cassandra. Um, that is the password. The password is posh, P-O-S-H. Make sure it's all caps. I don't know if that makes a difference, but make sure it's all caps. But yes, uh, this video will upload. You'll get the replay and it'll go into the group that you're in right now. Um, yeah, so don't worry. You'll definitely have access to that. Okay, so that is that. Where did, where did the manual I was going for? I think we're about to come up on a break, guys. So I could get some water. I'm a little parched. Who's this? Okay. Yeah, we'll talk about up and over next. We'll talk about, we, I, that was the rod pocket technique that I just did. Um, okay, yeah. So let me, let, me, let me show you guys real quick so you can see the end of that module. Show you guys the manual. Uh -oh -oh. Um, wait a minute, Davida. I'm going to get right back to that question. Let me show you this last page. That's how you can't get my... Mm -mm -mm. Wait a minute, guys. Why are you telling me? Uh, what happened to my screen? Okay. And sharing your screen. Good God, all of them. How I find the um? <laughs> I don't know. I don't want to end the bro. Okay, there we go. There it is. I just had it. Okay. Yeah, I'm still. I'm still learning. I'm not a MacBook person. I'm still learning it. So bear with me, guys. It's not that bad. It's not that different, but it's a little different. Now I just lost my screen again. Who is she talking to? See, it's saying no camera, no. Can you guys hear me? It's saying I don't have any. It's saying I don't have a camera. I don't know. Okay. See, it's saying we were unable to, I don't know what that means. What else? Could, probably Facebook, maybe. Okay. There's that. So do you see the manual up on the screen? It is. Look. Oh, no. Okay. Your thing is there. Okay. Is it off now? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we were on. Oh, we gotta. We're gonna talk about that. Where were we? Okay, this is what we just did. We did the basic backdrop. Um, we ran through those instructions. I just put it together for you guys. Um, there are some pictures. Sometimes you know people are visual. Some people are visual, and they can digest it a lot easier when they see the pictures. So I put that in there for you guys. Uh, the draping techniques. The one we just went over was the rod pocket. Um, the two most common ones is the rod pocket and the up and over, which I love the up and over because it's easy, it's simple, and I just, I love it. I like it. <laughs> but the rod pocket technique is your most standard type of draping and more commonly used technique. This technique is used for parameter draping as well as layered designs. This option provides a base fabric 
for complex designs that require more layers. This white right here, that is your base fabric. Um, we're going to use some other colors, but primarily for what we're doing today or what I'm going to show you guys today, I will be using the white as the base. So I didn't know how the colors would look like in the, like how it would look for you guys. So I wanted to use something that you, you will really be able to see. So that's why we're going with white. But then always remember to ensure the tag is tucked on the inside, like I told you earlier. Um, once you have reached the desired amount of drapes, connect the crossbar to the uprights and voila, you're done. Um, ne next session, when we come back from break, we'll be going through the up and over technique. Um, we'll go through that. I'll show you guys all about that. But I think we skip over something. Oh, yeah, the sketches, the prepping, and packing. So when we come back from break, that is where we will be. And then I want to answer that question I saw. Wait a minute. Okay. Okay. Uh-huh. Any tips on how to put up a fixed unit? So hard to do so. Yeah. Um, the beta. They are, um, uh, you more than like, I'm trying to see where my eight foot unit, where my eight foot uprights are. Is it, are they? Yeah. No, I didn't say the six foot. Wait a minute, Davida. No, these are eight. Yeah, this, these, I had these. These actually were the first ones I got because I didn't know. And boy, was I pissed because you don't have the um, the flexibility to, you know, like you saw me with these units. I'm pretty tall. I'm five nine, So it's easy for me to just stand there and play with my design. Where these, even when you put it in its lowest position, look at that. They're still, they're still eight feet tall. So the, the crossbar has to go all the way up here. And honestly, the only way you're at, you're really going to be able to play with it and do some designs. Where am I stuck, Lila? Oh, look at that. It's with a ladder or a chair or a table. <laughs> um, because it's, it's just hard. You can't do it. Like if you're doing something basic like this, you can because you just throw them on there and take a pole, which is I, I, how I used to do it. I just would take a pole and I normally use like a broom, a broomstick and um, play with it that way. Um, but yeah, if you want it to actually do some design, you would have to get a ladder. Whoa. So, see? And now I, this is it's not a heavy, big, big ladder, but this unit was fine. And then it gives me that leverage to play with my design. But it's a nuisance because you got to get up and you got to get down. Then you got to move it over. Then you got to take it with you. It, I don't have time for that. So, but when I, you know, when I first got it, I didn't know. So these were the units that I got first. But, um, you know, they, I think they still work. They're just a little more difficult to use. So definitely if you guys are getting units and don't have them yet, Give me that one. Definitely get you this unit, which is the standard uh, three piece. Three piece. No, yeah, the three piece. Um, so in this lowest position, it's able to to design easily. So see the difference? And it's not that big of a difference cost wise. Um, I believe this is a. I, I really don't know. <laughs> I don't know. But um, I think it's a 14, 7 or 14, something like that. But you see the difference? Oh, my God, Davida. <laughs> yeah, I actually got this little, um, this little unit from Walmart. And I really don't use it now because, you know, I have these. And I technically, I use these all the time, unless I run out, then I got to use these. But um, yeah, I used to have to use it when I was assembling chandeliers or 
it's nothing worse than having the design already raised and then you notice it's not right. So it's, I'm not going to take it back down to fix or troubleshoot. I normally would get on a ladder, go up, and get up there and fix it. So that runs that session. Um, we bought the break. Oh, five minutes. Um, not a long break because I really want to get to some good, fun stuff with you guys. And any questions thus far? Does anyone have any questions? I also want to help Cassandra really quick because I want her in the group over here with everybody else. So I, I'm going to troubleshoot her stuff to find out what's the problem. Okay, guys. So... Same place, same time, and about, it is, I got no time. What time is it? 10.52. It's 10.52. Let's come back. It's 10.52? Yeah. Let's come back at 11 o'clock, y'all. Are you guys with me? Is that cool? Wake up, wake up, yes. wake up. <laughs> okay, cool, cool, cool. So we'll be back here at 11. Oh, that's so cool. Thank you. And write them, well, you ain't got to write them down because you'll have the video, so. That's cool. But if, while you guys are, are on your break really fast, if there's anything you can think of that you're like, oh, I want to know that, oh, I want, write them down because you will forget. So write down your questions really quick, um, anything you can think of, and we're going to address it. If it's something that I could actually physically do to show you, I'm going to do it. Be back, guys. I like doing that. That's fine. How long was you on there?